When I started my climbing journey, I fell in love with slab almost immediately and pretty much avoided climbing anything that was overhung. I thought that I needed more upper body strength and dynamic power for steep wall climbing and was just more comfortable challenging myself with technical, balanced type of movements. Fast forward two years later and you'll surprisingly most likely find me on a steep wall at my gym. And don't get me wrong, I still love some good slab, but steep wall climbing has now become one of my favorite styles to climb on. There is a huge misconception that steep wall climbing requires tremendous upper body strength and the ability to canvas. In climbing, we know that the strongest person won't necessarily make a successful climber. Rather, a person with technical knowledge and the skill to apply this knowledge will be a successful climber. This video will explore two fundamental techniques the twist lock and drop knee, which are lower body based techniques that beginner climbers will need to succeed in steep wall climbing, especially as their upper bodies and grip strength are still developing. And for the purpose of this video, I am defining overhang as a rock face with a slope greater than 90 degrees. Note, I will be using the term steep wall interchangeably with overhanging wall. The tips that I am providing are more applicable for mild and moderate overhangs rather than roof climbs which are considered severe overhang. Roof climbs are completely parallel to the ground and because of the severity of the overhang have different techniques that I believe require more nuanced explanations in a different video. And with that, let's get started. Alright, so it is no secret that overhang climbings are physically demanding but it is also very technical. When starting to climb steep walls, newer climbers might climb with bent arms using primarily their upper bodies to ascend. However, keeping a consistent bend in one's arm when climbing is taxing on the body's energy systems and is definitely a way to make sure you're burning out during your sessions. The first skill that we will be going over is the twist lock. A twist lock occurs when a climber turns one hip into the wall and reaches for a hold with the same side hand. For example, a climber performing a twist lock with their right hip into the wall will generally reach up for a hold using the right hand, while a climber performing a twist lock with their left hip into the wall will generally reach for a hold using their left hand. To perform a twist lock, proper positioning of the feet is critical. A twist lock requires a climber to twist one hip into the wall, almost as if you're trying to touch the wall with your hip. Note that the climber is also using the outside edge of the same side foot they are twisting their hips into. In this example, I will be demonstrating a twist lock with my right hip. Watch as my right hip is turning into the wall utilizing the outside edge of my right foot. I press the right foot hard while pulling the opposite hand, in this case the left hand, to create the twist lock. I smear against the wall to establish balance. Alternatively, a twist lock can be performed by pushing against a left foothold. When done correctly, the twist lock should feel smooth and will relieve the stress from your upper body, transferring some of it to your hips and feet. Let's look at a case study of this overhanging V2 performed with the twist lock and without the twist lock. Climber A will perform the climb straight on, chest facing the wall and hips squared while climber B is utilizing their hips, initiating twist locks to ascend the wall. Due to the overhanging features of steep terrains, combined with the use of straight arms in climbing, a climber in a hip square position will naturally sag at the hips, placing stress on the upper body to move upwards. Notice how climber A has to power to each hold dynamically. This is known as a dead point and is a critical skill in climbing. However, it can be taxing on the body's energy systems and requires precision and accuracy. To alleviate some of the stress that the upper body experiences when climbing steep walls, twist locks allow a climber to leverage their hips and their feet to ascend. Notice how utilizing a twist lock allows a climber to move more statically than a hip squared position. Rather than dead pointing to each hold, the climber is able to leverage their lower body to move to the next hold with greater accuracy and precision. The twist lock requires engagement of both the hands and the feet. A common mistake that climbers will make when learning the twist lock is utilizing only one of these elements. 
For example, climber A is learning the twist lock and is able to effectively twist their hip into the wall. However, they do not engage their left hand as they're initiating the twist in the right hip. They may look like they're hopping to reach their right-handed hold rather than engaging and pulling into the right-handed hold. To perform the twist lock effectively, this climber needs to actively pull with their left hand while pushing on their right foot in order to create the opposing forces necessary to catch the right-handed hold. On the other hand, climber B has the opposite problem as climber A. They're able to actively pull with their left hand, but are struggling to engage their hips and utilize the footholds. When a twist lock is performed without engaging the hips, climber B might struggle to maintain control and balance when making an effort to reach the right-handed hold. A tip for climber B to better engage their hips is to imagine that they're standing up tall into the foothold and touching the wall with their hips. In an article by Climbing.com, professional rock climber Kevin Georgeson boasts the importance of drop knees, writing that learning a backstep or drop knee is quite possibly the most important technique for overhanging rock. Let's explore what makes this technique key for climbing steep walls. A drop knee is a lower body focused technique that requires at least three points of contact. The climber's feet should form a neutral base with one primary hand in a straight arm position to stabilize the body while the other initiates the reach. Utilizing the outside edge of one foot while stemming with the opposing foot, a climber initiates the drop knee by swiveling one hip into the wall and rotating the knee downwards. The toes should also point downwards. By creating opposing forces with the feet, the climber is in a stable position to reach statically to the next hold. Let's look at another case study of the opening sequence of an overhanging V2 performed with the drop knee and without the drop knee. Climber C will perform the climb straight on, chest facing the wall with the hips squared, while climber D is utilizing drop knees to ascend the wall. Similar to climber A in the twist lock example, climber C does not optimally utilize their energy to ascend the wall. Due to the overhanging nature of the terrain, a climber will naturally sag at their hips, placing stress on their upper bodies to move upwards. Drop knees are essential and advantageous in steep wall climbing because it pulls the hips closer to the wall translating the stress placed on the upper body to a climber's lower body. This allows climbers to generate upward motion utilizing the feet and the hips statically rather than relying on their upper body to pull. Solely relying on the upper body can cause climbers to move more dynamically, which is less predictable or low percentage. In a 2020 study that examined the causes of knee injuries in climbers, it was found that drop knees account for 16.9% of knee injuries in climbers, while heel hooks account for 40.3% and ground falls account for 22.1%. It may be no surprise that drop knees, which require the rotation of the hips and knees, can lead to injury. Climbing.com notes that in this position, you are effectively placing nearly 80% of the restraining force on your MCL. Drop knees are a critical technique for steep wall climbing and I employ this technique in nearly all of my sessions. Understanding the potential consequence of this technique isn't to discourage you from utilizing them, especially when we consider that heel hooks account for approximately 40% of injuries and this technique is even more commonly used. To avoid drop knee related injuries, it is important to remember that a climber should not feel pain or stress when performing this technique. At the first sign of pain, it is best to listen to one's body and drop. Factors such as flexibility, age, prior history of knee injuries, and more impact a person's ability to perform this technique. If you are looking to support strengthening your hips, knees, and lower body to perform this technique, I would encourage you to reach out to a certified climbing and strength training coach. By employing techniques such as the twist lock and drop knees on steep terrains, you will be able to leverage your lower body to move more statically and efficiently. And now that you have the technical knowledge, it is time to apply it on the wall. Remember that even if our minds know how to execute, our bodies require more patience and compassion. 
Learning these techniques takes time and also intentionality. And lastly, a gentle reminder to be kind to your mind and to utilize our community space and comment sections to uplift others. I appreciate you all always, and I will see you in the next video.